I think we all have our own sort of view on where career mode started to go down the toilet. Um, for many people, it's sort of around the FIFA 14, FIFA 15 area, isn't it? And I tend to agree with that. The last time I properly enjoyed a career mode was FIFA 13. I actually did the whole 15 seasons multiple times, and I loved it to death. And uh, there's a bloke called Perry that you will not have a clue about, who is a regen who will forever be in my heart from FIFA 13. And I loved it. That FIFA 12 as well, and pretty much every career mode before that, I adored. And it really wasn't until FIFA 14 where shit hit the fan, in my opinion, or it started to get a noticeably worse. I still enjoyed FIFA 14 and FIFA 15 for that matter. FIFA 16, I was like, meh. FIFA 17, I was like, ugh. Oh. And now FIFA 18, I'm kind of like, ugh. Oh, fuck. And that takes us into the point of this video. Instead of uh, looking at all the career modes when they were good, we're going to be negative and we're just going to look at from the point it started to go a little bit wrong, which in my opinion was FIFA 14. So we're going to look at FIFA 14 career mode for a little bit, we're then going to move on to FIFA 15, 16, 17, and then finally FIFA 18 and then we'll round up at the end. I don't know how long this video is going to be. Um, if, it's a, if it's long, I apologise, but there's a lot of there's a lot of moaning to do and uh, not a lot of time to do it so so like I say we're going to look through every career mode from FIFA 14 to FIFA 18 we're going to look at what was new in each of those career modes the complete lack of change especially aesthetically and we're just going to pinpoint where it was going wrong for career mode and how it's happened where for so long it's been like this and basically have a lovely little moan as as we uh, career mode and pro clubs people do obviously this isn't looking at pro clubs I just feel like I don't know it as well I'm sure someone else can do pro clubs I, I play pro clubs rarely I do enjoy it don't get me wrong it's just getting friends together at the right time and all that shit it's fun but I know career mode and I feel like I'm best suited to doing career mode so that's what we're gonna do and uh, obviously we got we got to start with uh, FIFA 14 so obviously here we are on FIFA 14, as you can see we got the World Cup update, which uh, wasn't the only thing we got on this World Cup year, unlike a certain year this year. <clears throat> anyway, not to hold grudges about the World Cup game not coming out, which was bullshit. We're here on FIFA 14, as you can see, its menu style has pretty much stayed the same. We've got our, our boy Pellegrini here, and Falcao. As you can see, first of all, budgets are completely different. <laughs> That's one thing that has changed actually. The budgets are a little bit more realistic. Um, for every crew, we're just going to go to Man City because they have money. Um, I don't know why I have to see the need to do this because we're not actually going to play it. Um, but yeah, all, the, all like, the money and things like that in the game were quite low. The, the funds that you had were quite low in comparison to real life, obviously. Every Premier League club now has money, and on FIFA that is rep that is shown. I think that changed FIFA 17. That became we will obviously see, but I think it was FIFA 17 where the budgets got better. So um, that's at least one thing. It should have been realistic anyway, but I suppose you could argue that money wasn't as crazy then as it is now. Um, uh, sup? I, I don't know. So yeah, let's have a look and see, first of all, let's talk about what was new on FIFA 14. Now, if you can't remember, before FIFA 14, it was very much a case you would search a player, the overall would be there, all the information would be there. This was the first year they introduced the Global Transfer Network, um, which obviously we have it today, so we know what it is. Um, and that, would send, it, that was the thing where, you know, you had scouts, as you can see. And you would send the scouts off. I do remember having one grudge with this game. It's not as noticeable in a career of Man City because you already know about the players that you want because they're obviously world class. People know about them. Um, but something I had an issue with was specifically with uh, lower league ones is that the scouts just felt like it took too long. And it still does the more you go into a career mode. But I feel like um, it has been it has been tweaked a little bit. So we've always got that. Um Obviously, that was the main new feature. I can't actually remember if there were any others. Obviously, request funds were still here. We're seeing that. We'll see that disappear soon enough. Um, and yeah, it was all. Obviously, we didn't have squad hub and things like that. Everything was separate. 
you'd have squad, squad report back in the day. I actually prefer squad report, I'll be honest. Um, but it, I suppose it's easier to keep it all in one place. Um, but yeah, you could come here and you'd see how all the players were growing. It was, it was wonderful times, wonderful times. Um, obviously, things like injury lists were kept separate and kit numbers, contracts were their own tab. Um, other than that, <laughs> it's pretty much the same. Obviously, we didn't have training at this point. We went for a few years. The uh, team management screen was different back then. It was still the uh, list format, um, which I suppose is better now. I suppose that has changed for the better. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's pretty much all. <laughs> that's pretty much it in terms of differences. Um, Obviously, from FIFA 13 to FIFA 14, it went a completely different reshape with the menu and all that. So, from FIFA 13 to 14, there was a difference. But from FIFA 14 to 18 is what we're looking for. And let's be honest, there isn't much of a difference. Um, I'm going to play on for a little bit. Obviously, I won't show you everything. We're going to just sign a few players and see things like that. One thing I'm just noticing as well, our scouts are actually... We send them out ourselves. Obviously, if you start FIFA now, um, they go to a certain amount of countries. The first one will be the country of the league you're in. Um, and then the uh, the other couple were kind of just random countries. On FIFA 14, we had to send them out ourselves. It's not a massive change. It's actually probably better we got to send them out ourselves because you know I suppose quite often they do send out scouts to the countries you know that you want to. But I don't know. It's pro probably more realistic that you actually do it yourself. But I suppose in the interest of saving time, it's also worth noting that. In terms of youth scouting and things like that, nothing has changed. Still the same system, still the same, you know, I've got to wait for them to go in transit and send them out. Nothing's changed in that regard. Oh dear, nothing, nothing's changed in that regard at all. So here we go, we're going we're gonna to try and buy Luis Suarez, I've decided. Um, obviously, first thing, value completely lower. Obviously, that adds to the fact budgets weren't high um, obviously you could have only a full season loan actually um, so values of players was actually quite a lot lower actually what was Messi valued at on this game let's have a let's have a look because we could potentially actually just go for him um, Barcelona 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 obviously this was the search system as well it wasn't what it is today um, Messi 66 million, okay, that's got a little bit more. I don't know if we can, no, we can't afford him. I wonder if they take uh, Richard Wright, bloody hell. Um, Jack Wardwell. I do want to try and get Messi, so that's what we're going to do. This was obviously the way the transfers went down back in the day, um, which was obviously quite different. No, we can't afford him, fuck it. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, it's like was it better back then? I don't know. I mean, obviously the main feature of FIFA 18 was to was the uh, transfer negotiations, which um, for the first three times that you did it was was kind of okay. But it really got stale so quickly, and I feel like there could actually be potential for an option to be more like this, where you just send the bid over instead. Um, and plus, that's actually more realistic because. Transfers now get done in about an hour on um on on FIFA eighteen. That doesn't happen in real life. It's not that quick. Unless it's deadline day and you're in a panic. But it's just this way is actually slightly more realistic because you send the offer off, they'll probably think about it for a few days, they might reject it quite quickly, you never know. And then and then it's all oh, hunky dory, Jolie someone watched Jolie and Lascott. You know what West Brom? It happens in real life, so you can happen. Uh, it can happen now. There you go. Enjoy. I'm sure you'll love him. But I'm really waiting for um, some scout report. Oh, okay, we're starting to get some now. And I did. You, I did a promising one for youth, just to try and showcase the fact that um, you can have him. That you. That you know, scouting took a while. Um, but at the time, I actually fuck off, man. You know, it's not happening. Um, at the time, I actually really enjoyed FIFA 14 career mode, and I've been tempted to go back and do one on the channel because I feel like I'd enjoy it more. Um, obviously, with FIFA 19 not too far away, it's kind of oh, we're just you know what we won't mess around. We'll offer you the 38 million. Um, I just feel like it would be quite entertaining. 
Um, let's have a look at the scout reports then. Obviously, we've got. Aha, promising. Um, obviously, these are all. They're all loan listed, so they're already partially scouted. So, nine days, which is sort of kind of realistic. Oh, this guy's not scouted. How long is this going to take? 12 days. It's not really proving my point, but. Specifically, it seems with lower league clubs, it would be a nightmare scouting, especially when you scouted a lot of players. As you can see, actually, there you go. We've already scouted what? We scouted none. It's taken 15 days now um, for Olivia Torres to be scouted. How long are you going to take, Emery Chan? Nine days. Twelve days. So I think it depended on the scout how long it would take. Um, I suppose you could say it's realistic, but 15 days is a long fucking time. Um, it should be a few days at most, realis realistically. I mean, it's it was designed to, you know, create modes meant to be quite quite streamlined. So this back in the day wasn't really streamlined, in my opinion. So as you can say, this is going to take 15 days. I don't know what that was. It disappeared. Jack, oh look how young he looks. Bloody hell. Um, but yeah, the scouting would take quite a while. That was my one main grudge with this game back in the day. Um. But other than that, we haven't really. There isn't really anything else to talk about on here. It's. It was. It was it changed from. FIFA? It was kind of aesthetically. Obviously, it changed a lot. Um, but in in terms of everything else, it really hadn't. Compared to FIFA 13, obviously the values are a lot lower. This you can ask for more money, which was something you couldn't do beforehand. Um, I'm not going to play a game because gameplay we all know it has slightly got better. I think. Well, the engine has changed for one thing, so that's always something. I wanted to see if we can sign Luis Suarez just for the half fun of it. Um, okay, wants 150k. Okay, that's sweet. There you go. Simple as that. And I also feel like the introduction of things like sell-on fees and sell-on clauses and more clauses actually would have worked better in that format of transfer negotiation because um, you could have like a drop-down menu, you could add them, sort of like football manager kind of. I feel like the way it is now, it's not as easy, um, which is why I think they should. I I think potentially they should give you a choice of um, what way do you want it like this, or do you want it with the um, cutscenes and shit. I think the one area cutscene was needed was, was press conferences, and the fact they got that for the journey, I don't understand why they haven't done it here. Anyway, I think as soon as we sign Luis Suarez, I think we're gonna just leave it at that. Um, oh, that's fun. Like I said, if if anyone is interested in watching a FIFA 14 career mode, be sure to be sure to mention it because I actually would quite like to do one. <laughs> um, I don't know who with. I don't know if it would be a big club or I had the idea of doing Leicester and trying to replicate the firstly the Championship win and then their Premier League win all in about three seasons. Um, that was my idea, and as you can see, without any hassle, Luis Suarez is signed. Easy as that. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably enough. Obviously, the news segment was a little bit more streamlined back then. It was probably better this way, actually, because the actual... In FIFA 18, I don't know if you know, it's the actual news articles haven't changed at all. They just take a lot longer to load because they've got those pointless little cutscenes. Just get rid of them, honestly. There's no point in them. If you're going to have the news segment, keep it like this. There is no point in having a little video here. You might as well just take that out and just add this again. It's pointless. That was a pointless new feature, that's all I'm saying. Um, anyway, I think... For now, we're going to leave it here, here on FIFA 14. We're going to now uh, move on to FIFA 15. So here we are on FIFA 15 now. As you can see, the budgets are still relatively low compared to what they are now. They haven't really changed too much. I think Man City's might have gone up a little bit. But other than that, the budget's still the same. Um, the menus are obviously the same as well. In terms of... The Oh, excuse me. In terms of the aesthetically, they all look the same as they did on FIFA 14, so nothing changed there. And off the top of my head, I'm struggling to think of actually what was different in FIFA 15 career mode. I don't think there was much. FIFA 15 was very much known for um, the way the gameplay worked, in the sense of pace whoring. Pace was unbelievably OP. So from an attacking point of view, it was quite entertaining. And goalkeepers were shockingly shit, so it was an attacking game. It was annoying when the goalkeeper was shit for you, but... You didn't complain when it wasn't, uh, when it was the other way around. But FIFA 15 was very much a... Um, obviously, FIFA 14 was the first game on PS4 and Xbox One. I do feel like FIFA 15 was just a little bit of a um, refinement game, essentially, if that makes sense. 
it was just about trying to refine it instead of adding new shit to it. Um, they didn't do a good job of refining it in the end, but they tried. Um, as you can see, not much has really changed. Uh, global transfer network still here, and it was refined this year. And as I mentioned in P14, um, it now automatically sends out, sent out three of the scouts to certain countries. So as you can see, we've got Germany, Spain, and England. And one more scout here, which you could send to wherever you choose, France, for example. Um, and there would already be certain instructions. As well as that, the scouting took less time, I believe. As you can see, obviously these players are already a little bit known, but we'll go and find some random Germans um, and scout them and see how long that takes. But six days, six days, it was, it was six days for most of these. Um, and it was refined a little bit compared to uh, FIFA 14. If we just go and quickly have a look for some, let's just go to Germany, for example, Hoffenheim perhaps, and scout some players that you know nothing about. It's still only nine days, so as you can see, it has been, it certainly has been refined on FIFA 15 compared to FIFA 14. Um, that's pretty much what this game mainly was, just a little bit of refinement. As you saw there, actually, quickly go back. Search players have changed, it gone to a menu that's more similar to the layout of the whole game. There's the uh, little square tiles instead of this the normal search. Which actually, to be fair, now, now I'm on it uh, and I've used both of them. For the way that it used to be from FIFA 13 backwards, where you already knew the overalls, you already knew the attributes of all the players. The FIFA 14 search me menu was the was by far the best option, but in terms of now, where you know nothing about these players, this is probably the best way of setting it out. Um, and also, I suppose, if you like everything to be in order, the fact the menu is similar to the rest of the game probably probably is a good thing. Um, yeah, like last game, like last um, FIFA, on FIFA 14, we'll quickly try and sign a player. No, well, let's, let's, let's prize those all away from Arsenal. 50 of them. 50 minutes, Jesus. Alright. Um, as you can see, nothing's changed. It was still the same way of buying players as it was on FIFA 14, and it was on FIFA 13 before that. And FIFA 12, I believe. I, I think that system was still on FIFA 12. Um, obviously, objectives are yet to come in, so it was simply you'd get an email. Didn't mention this on FIFA 14, you'd get a league objective, win the league title, domestic cup objective, win the cup. Obviously Man City would be expected to win anything. Um, despite the fact there was nothing new in this on FIFA 15 compared to FIFA 14, I actually really enjoyed FIFA 15 career mode for the most part. And I know I said on FIFA 14 that I'd be quite down to doing the FIFA 14 career mode. To be honest, uh, if it, FIFA 14 or FIFA 15, I'd, I'd be fine with either. Um, I really enjoyed both. So... Like I said, like I said then, leave in the comments. V14, V15, would you be interested? And maybe I'll do that, because yeah, I'd quite like to. Obviously it might be a while now because FIFA 19 is not far away. Um so we're we get Ozil through the door. As you can see, transfers getting transfers in, same as often. Counter offer, rejects, don't accept stall, same as it was on V14. There's only one more thing I really want to talk about. I want to quickly just sign those. We'll have that over the line, as you can see we have. Um, accept. So we've got Mesut Ozil in. Same, is that the same way we would on FIFA, you know, 14. We can now bring him in. There we go. And that team looking nice and snazzy. Um, there's one more thing I just want to talk about quickly. I didn't mention on FIFA 14, and it was the same on FIFA 15. It changes on FIFA 16. The uh, friendlies. This was the last FIFA to have just random free friendlies. As much as I've got quite bored of the whole um, international tournament thing, I actually didn't like this either. Um, I, I back in, I thought it was FIFA, FIFA, FIFA 08 and FIFA 09. Certainly on the PS2 anyway, you could pick your own friendlies. You could pick up to four. And I think they should do that where you could pick up to five friendlies. You can pick who you want to play against. There'll be certain teams that are more realistic to accept. And um, you can also choose if you want to be in a tournament or not. I think that was a f that's a far better system. Personally, it's a little bit more realistic. And it gives you something to do in June. Because June is such a barren month on career mode. Nothing happens unless you've got a few more contracts to sort out. So in somewhere in June, you could have the option of picking the friendlies you want. For July, I just feel like, and, and early August as well, I just feel like that would be a better system. Anyway, that's pretty much it for FIFA 15. There's not really much to talk about. This was a obviously a sign of the... Uh, 
laziness to come, I suppose, from EA. Nothing new, nothing particularly new. Re request funds watch, still there. So, always got that, haven't we? Um, but yeah, I think that that put up for FIFA 15. We're now moving on to FIFA 16, which isn't isn't a personal favourite of mine, I must say. So here we are in FIFA 16, and as I said at the end of the FIFA 15 segment, this wasn't my favourite. <laughs> In fact, it's probably my least favourite FIFA ever. Um, I just didn't like the way it played, gameplay-wise. One thing that must be said is that, aesthetically, it's probably the best-looking FIFA game there's been. In terms of, I know it's a silly, it's silly because it's only a menu colour, but the light blue I really actually liked. And not only that, I really liked the fact they had your your team stadium in the background, or a stadium in the background. Obviously, for me, there's Fratton Park in the background. I know a lot of play, people probably support a team that doesn't have a ground on there, so it didn't really mean much. But I really liked this. I really liked having the stadium in the background. And as we see on career mode as well, that did come over. Um, other things to note, this was the first FIFA to have the Women's International Cup, which is a feature that is still on FIFA, but completely forgotten about because it's really put in the depths of FIFA, that is. Um, they made a really big deal out of this, which at the time I thought, oh, that's, okay, that's a good idea, but they're, they're just going to milk it now and then kill it, aren't they? And that would appear to be what they did so uh, I was right there anyway let's get into career mode and let's see what is at stake as you can see Portsmouth have 1.1 million so I mean the budget still weren't realistic but the fact they gave Portsmouth that much at the time was kind of like wow Man City's budget has gone up to 72 million as you can see so here we go again um, don't need to bother with any of that so uh, yeah obviously if you're if you were versed in what happens around FIFA at this point, um, you'll know what the new things are. And like I said, it's worth noting, as you can see, the stadium of the team you're having a career mode with appears in the background, which um, it was a nice touch, and I really wish they kept that. I think they really should bring that back, and I hope they do one day. Um, I don't see why they took it out, to be honest. It seems a bit pointless to take out. It was really, it was, it's such a small little thing, but it was really quite nice, and it made it a little bit more interesting, um, rather than having a generic fake football ground that belongs to no one in the background. I feel like they should do this again where they have the ground of the team you're with. Um, so let's have a look at FIFA 16 career mode then. This is the only career mode in this whole thing that's even had a few minor changes. Obviously like I said pre-season tournaments took over from friendlies, normal friendlies, and you had the choice of three, which is the same as it is now. Again, these features are good, but they have not been refined in any way whatsoever, um, which is a shame, really. Um, so we'll pick that one. And as you can see, that brings us into international games instantly. And there's a one other big change, and that is training. Yeah, again, training's probably, in certainly in this time, from FIFA 14 to FIFA 18, is by far the most influential new feature in career mode. However, it has so much more potential to be you know, made better. Um, as you can see, you pick up to five. And by made better, there should be more game. There should be more um, skill games available, in my opinion. Um, they should allow you to be able to change a player's position, train a player in a certain position, and train those attributes up that are good for that position. Um, there's just so much. There's so much to do. Oh, good old Thierry Ambrose. If you've been watching my son in career mode. Shout out to win me. Um, there's just so much more that training could be. It's still a good feature. I'm not going to complain, but I'm not complaining too much anyway. But it's it's just it was, there's so much more it could be. Um, so yeah, this was the first time we saw training. First time we saw preseason tournaments. Um, as for everything else, request funds watch still there, still bloody there, hanging in there, isn't it? Um, I hope to God they bring that back. Surely they got you. It's such a small thing. It's pointless keeping it out. Um, in terms of scouting, let's have a look. As you can see, these players are all got a little bit of knowledge about them. Six, six days, six days. If we quickly um, look again, like I say, oh, they've all already sent out to other places. Um, so if we quickly search, search players, exactly the same. Um, not that I really needed to be changed at all, but um, let's have a look. Random player. Let's get this bloke. Nine days. See the scouting. So they did it. They kept the scouting relatively similar from FIFA 15 onwards. Um, and once again, the same sort of test we've been doing every 
every game. Let's try and buy a player and see what what it's like. It's exactly the same. Um, but again, I actually think this would be better. I feel like if they refine it and add more options such as selling clauses, um, release clauses, things like that, I feel like that system could actually be a go-to. I know they're probably not going to do that because transfer negotiation is one of their newest features. Um, but it just it's so much hassle after like three times the transfer negotiations. It's such a hassle, and you just really can't be asked to do it anymore. I just noticed my budget's gone up exponentially because of the career mode boost. Isn't that nice? Uh, we get to Al Halal. We play our first game in this. Um, we won't play it. We'll just sim it because I really can't be asked. Southampton want Bonnie. You can have him. Um, but yeah, I'm struggling with things to talk about <laughs> because. There's just not much. There's not much um, different other than the friendlies and the. Um, actually, no. Let's, let's have a. Let's have any actual. Um, there's just. It's not. There's really not much to talk about, is there? Um, like I say, the menus are nice. They're pretty. Uh, there's new type of friendlies and training. So uh, I'll just replace. I don't give a shit. Um, let's see if we can win. Oh, there's a prize. We won. 3-0. There you go. And that would give you prize money, obviously. That was the incentive. The harder the tournament, the more money you tend to get. Let's just do training one more time. There you go. It's the same as it is now. I don't know why I'm showing you this. Like, it's some sort of new thing to you. And, uh, yeah, that pretty much, again, that wraps us up for this. That's it. That's pretty much all I can talk about about FIFA 16. Um, have we signed thingy yet? Oh, we had it accepted. You know what, I'm not going to finish this because we all know how it works. So I'll just go end it here and we're now going to FIFA 17. Oh. We're looking picture perfect on this most special of special days. How bothered. The FA Cup final, which will be played out here in just a few oh. hours' time. Well, when I just for context, right, I've been waiting for so long. Because this is the first... FIFA 14 didn't have one. FIFA 15, FIFA 16 didn't have one. Ah, oh, You fucking... Oh, fucking piece of shit. Uh, we might as well talk about certain things while, while we're here. Because I've been waiting for so long and I can't be bothered to quit this game again as it installs for some reason. This is the first one to have a, prop, like, a fairly large update. It, had a, it was a few gigabyte. Uh, something went wrong with it the first time. Don't know what. Just decided it didn't want to install, so I had to delete it and do it again. Uh, we're now on here, and now got to wait for the, this bollocks. Um, well, what was new on FIFA 17? As you can see, the generic stadium in the background of the menu that I said about earlier on FIFA 16 has gone. It's now just a generic stadium. Um, sorry, I mean, you, you know what I mean, Jesus. Um, this was obviously the first game that had the journey. Um, which the less said about it, the better. Um, and it was also the first game to be on the Frostbite engine, which, in case you're not aware, is the Battlefield engine. It's the game that's made Battlefield. It's the engine, sorry, that's made Battlefield so well known for its graphics. Um, to be honest, that whole cutscene bit that we just saw kind of makes me realise they haven't really utilised the, the Frostbite engine enough. They've yeah, all right, the journey. But aesthetically, and in terms of making it realistic, making it look like it's a proper broadcasted football match when you're playing a game, they could really use Frostbite Engine so well. Um, but they haven't done it. They've not got any of those um, sort of shots of stadiums that they just had for Wembley just to showcase the engine literally on the first game. They don't do that at all. Um, so it's a bit of a wasted, wasted thing. Um, I've got to wait a lot. I've got to wait. It would appear. So, uh, we come back on career mode in a little bit, Jesus. It's almost the signal for summer in England, really, and the FA Cup final comes around, and here we are at Wembley. What's the point in the pigeons? Down the hours to the big what? Oh yeah, we got pigeons now. Well, they say the cream rises to the top. Oh, Jesus, piss off. Bloody pigeons. Oh, well, now 86 now, fucking hell. Anyway, here we are. Finally, it hasn't been long for you. It's been a second, but for me, it's what time is it? It's been like an hour. 
an hour of pissing around with this and um, I thought I was doing this video rel relatively quickly until that point it was going quite quickly getting through the FIFA's but we stalled anyway obviously the uh, screen changed on FIFA 17 this is when we got this screen where you had obviously the main new feature of FIFA 17 the board expectations and the objectives which again is another good idea but wasn't implemented well and hasn't been improved since um, I feel like there's so much more they could do from this and plus I remember on FIFA 17 specifically I took Sunderland all the way down to League 2 to see if I could get sacked didn't get sacked no matter what I didn't get sacked I took them down to League 2 and didn't get sacked um, which was quite unbelievable as you can see all the budgets were realistic this year Man City's gone from what around 70 odd million to 100 million Man United have 102 61 million for Liverpool even teams like, oh, I mean, Hull, poor Hull. <laughs> Less than Aston Villa, I think, yeah. Um, but budgets went up and things like that. So, uh, yeah, obviously, this screen we know on FIFA 18 now. This was the first time we got this as well. We got to, uh, oh, excuse me, customise our manager. By customise, I mean pick a random thing. Pick a random head. Um, and this was the first time we had all that, and that that's pretty much it. <laughs> Um, like I say, when it comes to objectives, I feel like they could easily be improved. Um, the whole finances was, the finances thing was added as well for FIFA 17. And as much as that's a returning feature technically, because finances used, finances used to impact you back in FIFA 06 and 07, back in those days. But they don't impact you at all in this game. It's literally just profits you're making. You don't go into debt. You don't go. You can't go into administration or anything like that. And I feel like if they're going to have finances, they might as well use it properly. There might as well be a week, a weekly like summary or monthly summary of the finances, where you're losing money, where you're gaining money, and overall what profits or what losses you're making each month. And I feel like that should have an impact on you, but it doesn't. It has no impact on you whatsoever. The budget will go up next season anyway. Nothing matters. Um, this bloody old chair. This chair really needs replacing. Um, that was about it. Um, so. Anyway, this is taking forever as well. Oh, well, well, well done. Thank you. Um, so, uh, <laughs> let's jump on. Let's see what has changed from the FIFA 17 menu. Obviously, pre-season tournament was still here. No different to what it was last time. Um, yeah, there's nothing really to say about that. Training, same as last time. Um, and yet, Sharon Thierry Ambrose is still at the club, obviously. Let's just uh, train them again. I don't know if they added more games this year. They added more, or they changed the name of some of them in FIFA 18. Um, but yeah, there's not really much to say about it. Training's the same. They didn't improve it in any way, um, which is a shame, and they still haven't, obviously. So. A feature that could easily get better in the future, EA. It's not hard. Um, so yeah, obviously, one thing that I haven't talked about yet, which we'll talk about now, is obviously at the top there you've got your manager rating start off at 80, and it'll be affected by your objectives, which all of which have pretty much stayed the same since FIFA 18. I think there are a couple of new ones on FIFA 18. Um, but not many, it's not massive in terms of what has been implemented to this. And again, it just seems a little bit pointless if it's hard to get so hard to get sacked. And if they if you fail, you don't really hit any you don't really hit any stumbling blocks. It, it's not really it doesn't really affect you in any way. And um So yeah, that could really do with implementation, scouting. Scouting to better in six days. No different there. Signing players. Um, <laughs> Kazula was 80. Oh, poor Kazula. Uh, we're by Kazula just to showcase. Again, this was the last FIFA that had this sort of style of transfer negotiation. Um, obviously, we're going to FIFA 18 in a little bit. But it all changed after this point. And it, uh, so this was the last year of that. Also, the last year of just our squad, report, squad reports like this. Obviously, we paid homage to it in FIFA 14. For like the last time we saw it, we should pay homage to it again. Here it is. Um, yeah, it will be missed in the future. 
other than that, nothing else has really changed. Um, so, yeah, again, we we move, we play one game of this, we do this. What do you do? One two now. That's pretty much FIFA 17 wrapped up in a couple of minutes. Really not worth the hour wait I had to do, but never mind. We we move on now on to obviously the current FIFA, the final FIFA, FIFA 18. Right here we are on FIFA 18. Finally, we've gone through from FIFA 14 to here. As you can see from the menus uh, on FIFA 17, nothing has changed. Not even the information in the the little paragraph has changed. Um, Man City, yet again, same screen for the, like the um, what's it called? The customization. No new customization options. And um, obviously, this is the newest one, so we don't really need to do anything. The only thing we're going to do is sign a player because. That is the only new thing in FIFA 18, and of course, there's a. We've been doing it for most of most of the games. There's a certain little thing that we're gonna not see in uh, in FIFA 18. One thing is that that is come becoming quite apparent is that the loading times are taking a lot longer on FIFA 17 and 18 than they did on all the others. <sighs> if anything's getting bloody worse, isn't it? Alright, pre-season tournament, same as it was the last two years, blah, 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 blah. Um, squad report and transfer hub are new, obviously. Squad hub is basically putting all these together. Um, yeah, you know all that shit, don't you, let's be honest. Training is now down here. Um, same as it was last time, no need to go into it. Objectives, uh, let's just quickly read them, see if there is anything we notice that is different. I can't remem remember if any of these are... No, these are these are all on FIFA 17. I think there are a couple of new ones, I can't say them off the top of my head, but notice there's something missing from the office. Can't ask for more money anymore. Why take that out? Such a pointless thing to take out. Um, and let's quickly go and buy a player. Let's Go and buy Deli Alley. You can't buy a player without them being in your shortlist now, so just one extra step for that, isn't it? You can also delegate to buy and delegate to loan once you get fed up with this bullshit, but we're going to do it because that's the point of this video. This is the one new feature, and uh, some would argue it's not even really that necessary. Let's go in with a cheeky 45 million. Let's skip this because we can't be asked. Skip this because we can't be asked. Um, 50. Actually, we won't skip this because this is what it was like in the beta, and this is obviously what what happens. That's more than we were prepared to offer. Can we settle on 50 million? See how much quicker I read that than that cutscene took to actually go through. It's so long and so drawn out. Um, we'll just accept it. We'll let this play out. Okay, I understand you're not willing to part with Valley that easily. We're willing to give you 56.3 million in order to seal the deal. Okay, that wasn't as long, but it was still like two or three seconds longer. And that brings us on to the contract bit, which is is just as tedious. Thanks for thank you for having us. Let's begin by talking about his role at the club. My client expects to be an important player and play in most matches throughout the season. See, was that really that long? Did, did you really need that long? I'm just saying. Maybe it's being petty, but... Can't be bothered. Yep, yeah, sure. Sure, that works for all of us. We're happy to offer Ali a four-year contract. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight seconds, roughly, that took to get us through that. We don't want to insert a release clause in Ali's contract either. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine this time. Got to nine. See, it was just incredibly drawn out, and after you used it a couple of times, it was so tedious. So awfully tedious. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much that. There is literally nothing else to talk about in FIFA 18, which is kind of a shame. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I'm, I know this video is well, it's probably closer to 40 minutes now, possibly over 40 minutes. So we'll try and keep this short, but just a little 
sort of conclusion to this all. If you've managed to get this far, well done. Fuck now, you. You've had basic. You, how you've done that, I have no idea. Um, even if you skipped through a little bits of it, that's fine. The fact you're at the end is just saying something. It's a. Sh it's really quite a shame that we've not had that much in the last what four or five years, and it appears that we're not getting much in this FIFA either, in FIFA 19. Um, one must hope that eventually it will get better and we'll soon see a change in the wind. Um, but yeah, one thing that has became apparent to me is from FIFA 14 to 15, going through these, I'd rather play 14 and 15 than 16, 17 or 18. And um, that says a lot, really. It's just not... It's, it's, it's not good enough. It really isn't good enough. I mean, I could do the same thing with pro clubs. I didn't do it with pro clubs simply because it's not my mode, particularly. Um, but you could do the exact same thing with pro clubs. You could load it up. It would be the same exact thing. And that's it. Um, they really got to change. they got to buy their ideas. Like, one thing that's became clear to me is this community doesn't really want to back down. We're not, like, going, well, okay, we're going to stop now. We're just going to piss off and play Pez. <laughs> Who plays Pez? Um... Joking, Pez is a good game. I like Pez, don't shit on me. Um we clearly a lot of the community is a lot more passionate than EA are for these modes, which is which is a problem in its own right. Um but we won't back down that easily. So hopefully soon enough there's a lot more pressure on them now, I feel like. Um eventually they're surely gonna have to buck their ideas up because they will get worried that people will stop buying it. And they ain't need that money. That's what they want the most. So, anyway, if you've enjoyed this, if you got to the end, sure, be sure to leave a like. Um, comment. What's your what's your favourite FIFA ever? Let's put a positive spin on this. What's your favourite career mode, manager mode, whatever? Um, I'd be interested to read your comments on that. I say thanks for watching. If you're new around here, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.